coming to you, Kimberly, I will just look at some of the African countries mm -hmm. and I tell you for sure this struggle is real. I have traveled to different ones, you know, for instance, as in Zim, at least in Kenya, you can maybe access these ones at an affordable rate. Right. There are countries where it is way expensive, mm -hmm. way expensive for you to actually get the parts. Honestly, in as much as you would want to, to, to maintain the cleanliness and the hygiene and just have it cool and calm, mm -hmm. it is not always the case. And some of us actually, you know, react to some of them, the products that have been used to probably make this uh, sanitary towels and generally, you know, the materials that we use during the menstrual processes. So what would be one big advice to say the government? Because, you know, some initiatives, the key initiatives will always start with the government. Mm -hmm. You know, we can come out here and speak all we want, but, but you know, there's that force that the government can put mm -hmm. that would be transformational. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're looking forward to. Yes, well, I actually work in uh, the area of development to eradicate poverty and hunger. That's what I do for my, for my passion, for my living. And what we've found is that keeping a girl in school will change the whole economic yes. environment of yeah. every country in mm -hmm. Africa and the world, actually. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if they're in school, they won't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And we look at child pregnancy rates of up to 20 to up to 40 percent in some countries in Africa mm -hmm. so that means four out of ten girls are getting pregnant before mm -hmm. they're 18. Yeah. Um, we look we did a study in Uganda between 8 and 12 years of age 73 percent of these children are being sexually abused and they wow. admit to being sexually abused mm -hmm. and it's all about you know getting money for your pads or getting money for your pens or whatever yeah. it is. So that's number one. We need to make sure the girls stay in school. Mm -hmm. Number two is, you know, what are the best ways to do that? And, and when I look at this particular solution mm -hmm. and compare it to this, mm -hmm. so we can donate one of these for 250 shillings. Mm -hmm. These obviously cost about 200 bob a pack, and that will last you for one period. Mm -hmm. This will last you for 10 years. And yes, of course, you do need water and you do need to be clean, mm -hmm. but it's a lot less than the washing the reusable pads mm -hmm. and then having to dry them and everything. This, you can just pop it in your pocket. You can have it with you all the time so that you, when you don't know your period is coming, you can be prepared. Mm. Um, so I really think that this is a great sustainable solution. Mm -hmm. And um, we're really looking for ways to get more support so we can donate more cups mm -hmm. because the need is very, very yeah, great. It is. Um, the two or 3,000 girls that we've already donated them to are very happy. I mm -hmm. wish we could have brought some on yeah, the... Sure on the program mm -hmm. and I think that's about the yeah. experience. That should be my question. What yeah. has been the experience? Because all of you have worked with girls out there, mm -hmm. you know, in, you know in, in the slum setup and all that. So what has been the response, the experience? How are they receiving some of, you know, these talks that we're having and sessions that we're ta having towards ensuring that we maintain uh, menstrual hygiene? To start with you and then we come over to Kimberly. Come again. Uh, the experiences that you've had, you mm -hmm. know, like how well is the society receiving, you know, the move and the initiatives that you people are putting aboard mm -hmm. towards addressing this. Sometimes, you know, you'll have actually parents saying that, why do you have those sessions? Those are sessions that you take in there to be taught, you know, things that are not good for you and all that. So how is the society receiving all these sessions? Okay, first, it's, a, it's, it's such a nice experience, mm -hmm. uh, bearing in mind that we come from a setup that you'll find that most of the parents, they don't share the information with their daughters, there is this relationship that a daughter and a mother needs to have, but we come in as mentors, we mm -hmm. bring the girls together and mm -hmm. empower them on the different skills and information they need to know. Mm -hmm. So in our part, we feel like it made a huge impact because mm -hmm. girls are now going to school. Those whom that the sanitary towels doesn't reach, reach out to them, we ensure that each and every girl get the sanitary towels. Mm -hmm. And if we conduct the sessions, we at least manage to give three packs of sanitary towels, which will last them for at least three months, mm -hmm. whereby we are very, very sure that the three sanitary towels, it's for three months, and the three months, whole of three months, the girls will be in school. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so no more uh, three days to five, seven days yeah. of a missing school for girls. Yeah. Stella, what has your experience been like? Uh, it has been wow. Mm -hmm. So I've done like several activities yeah. with both girls and uh, the boys, and uh, the current one where 
on International Menstrual Hygiene Day, yes. we had one activity with the street girls wow. and women. That's and another uh, challenge. It was so shocking yeah. of what they are using. Mm. You can imagine a girl is using tissues, yeah. gazettes, for her to be to maintain her menstrual. Wow. That's, that's it was so shocking. Yeah. And uh, we managed to reach up to 100 girls. We gave them like five packs of sanitary towels. Mm -hmm. And remember, you can't give someone a sanitary towel and you don't give them a panty. Yes. Yes. Where will they, Where use, will it? they use it? So yeah. we gave them pa pa the pants, sanitary yeah. towels mm -hmm. and the pants for them to be hygienically mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And I believe the society should at least take up this initiative and start the conversations. We should understand that menstruation is not a woman thing. Mm -hmm. It's a societal thing. thing. Yeah. And the moment we'll embrace these talks, mm -hmm it will make a great difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A conversation that has been ongoing for a long time. What yeah. has your experience been like, and you know, towards that journey of liberation? Like, are we almost there? Well, what we've found um, has been really exciting in our work is to go to the schools, and the first thing we do is we work with the teachers. Yeah. So we talk to the teachers, and we provide them with cups, and we show them how to use them. Mm -hmm. And then we go in, and we talk to the girls, and then we provide cups for their mothers as well. Mm -hmm. Because we do think that, you know, all of us are bonded in this experience. Yeah. And if we do it together, it can allay your fears. It can make you feel more comfortable. And so we provide a cup for the mother and a cup for the daughter. Wow. And then we provide training for everybody. And yeah. then they share that training and they share the experiences. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, it means that if I've got my first period and I'm having a hard time putting my cup in or mm -hmm. even fixing my sanitary pad, mm -hmm. I know that I can talk to Jasmine and yeah. say, can you come and help me? Yeah. You know, because now we've had this conversation together mm -hmm. and yeah. we've shared and we've bonded over this common experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what you were saying about this, street thing for it's a girl thing we actually have donated hundreds of cups in Boston Massachusetts USA to homeless women wow. mm. because everybody who doesn't have a home and everybody who doesn't have income mm. faces the same challenges because yeah. we're all women yeah. Yeah. everybody in the whole world mm. you know from the time we're nine and so something like this though this will last you all the way through your secondary school up until your college years, mm -hmm. right? So it can take you 10 years from 9 to 19. Mm -hmm. So this can be like your oh, best friend, yeah. right, for 10 years. No more so worries. So that's what yeah. we're trying to do is to, <laughs> to get people to understand that it's okay to talk about okay, it. It's, yeah. Right. Well, that experience, that journey is still <laughs> ongoing. We're going to be there. Liberation is coming for sure, for sure. And the only way we're going to attain this is when everyone of us is experiencing that smooth run mm -hmm. during their menses. And I think that's where we're headed. Mm -hmm. And we certainly remain positive mm -hmm. that this is where we're going to land. So as we get to wind up, thank you so much. Of course, uh, that was a very great and candid discussion coming from uh, Kimberly Smith. Thank you so much for your time. Co-founder, it's a girl thing. Indeed, it is a girl thing. We heard Stella. Stella Caviti is the founder, Nivali Shepard. Thank you so much for your time. That is Nivali Shepard Initiative. It was great having you. And lastly, Yasmin Mohammed, who's the founder of the Superb. Yeah. It's called the, just the Superb. CBU. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your time. So mm -hmm. I give you 30, 30 seconds mm -hmm. to wind up the conversation in your parting shirts or on your parting shirts and basically what you think should be addressed that maybe we have not addressed. I would really, again, like to thank Ibru for bringing this out. This mm -hmm. is the second time we've been here. Uh, one of your champions is Francis. And through this mm. experience, we've ex been in contact with a lot of men and a lot of gentlemen. Actually, in our last show, we had um, Muslim men mm -hmm. calling in and asking, could we come to their communities to try and solve and help their girls? Wow. And so what we found is that men actually are the key because they understand, if a man can understand what it's like to be a woman and what this phase is like and not make it a shameful time, but make it a beautiful thing, right. then working together, I think it's going to make a sea change, mm -hmm. a real change. Thank you. <laughs> I, I would love to thank Ebru for starting the conversations. Right. We are just starting. Yes. And uh, it's going to be a nice journey to mm -hmm. have you guys on board. Mm -hmm. We've been in the community level yeah. and we understand how hectic it can be. Right. But through you guys taking it up, yeah. it will help a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, to the government, watch out. We are trying to come up with a follow-up 
channel mm -hmm. for those sanitary towels that mm -hmm. you're saying mm -hmm. they're reaching to schools. They're not. It's just the beginning. Yeah.